أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين وبائف الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأراضين بأب القاسم مصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائه مع عداء الله إلى قيام يوم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما هذه الحياة الدنيا إلا لهو ولعب وإن الدار الآخرة لهي الحيوان لو كانوا يعلمون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected brothers and sisters I'm here again inshallah for the short lessons from Tafsir al-Mizan and first of all Taqabbalallahu a'malakum during the holy month of Ramadan tonight I'm going to talk about the concept of ad-dunya in Quran what is the term ad-dunya what is the meaning of the term ad-dunya in Quran you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word you know on multiple occasions Many times you have this reference to a dunya or al hayatu dunya. What is the meaning and what is the relationship between this concept and the discussions we had previously? In Surah to Ankabut, verse number 64, and I ask all of you to open the holy book, inshallah, Quran, and look at this verse of Quran. In Surah to Ankabut, verse number 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوُ وَلَعِبُ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ What is this worldly life except an amusement and a game? Yet the final home, means the hereafter, is the real life, if they only realized it. We have this use of the term ad-dunya in other verses of Quran, like Surah Al-Rad, Verse number 26, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَعَ This worldly life in comparison with the hereafter is nothing but a good, but something that you buy and sell. Or in other verse in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 28, تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They want what? The, the, the beauty of this worldly life. Or in Surah An'am, verse number 32, The life, this worldly life, is nothing but a game and amusement. Nothing more. Again, in Surah Al-Hadid, inshallah, I'll come to this verse. Verse number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this worldly life is nothing but what? But the illusion. You see on the multiple places of Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is admonishing the dunya or the love of dunya or being uh, related to the this worldly life. The first question is what is dunya? You know, the first rudimentary, you know, understanding of many people who have, you know, this relationship with Quran is that dunya is this earth on all the planets and skies and galaxies and the solar system and everything that we see. So the question is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to admonish this dunya? This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why Allah says bad things about his creation? This, this doesn't make any sense. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alongside with Imam al-Khomeini, they say that this ad-dunya al-mazmuma, this reprehensible vault ad-dunya is not this planet, this obvious trees and skies and rivers and seas and oceans. This dunya is something else. And we want to understand the reality of this dunya throughout this verse, these verses of Quran, inshallah, according to Tafsir al-Mizan. Allah Taba Taba'i, he says that the reality of dunya, according to these verses, is not these beings and objects out there. He says that وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَحْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ Or in other words, 
اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا اللعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور In many verses of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He defines the dunya by saying that this dunya is just a game is just an amusement is an illusion is an imagination you have constructed this dunya this is a mental construct thing this 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 doesn't exist out there this is why allah Taala says that if dunya is al mata al ghurur and dunya is not the real life because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse surah al ankabut says what inna dar al akhirata la hiya al hayawan the real life is the hereafter not the dunya <coughs> he says that dunya in quranic context is all the mental constructs of the human being all the imaginations and illusions that we have and we live with on the daily basis for example take ownership as an example when you say i own this car this is my car okay out there there is a car and you are out there you two exist there okay the car and you but where is the ownership you can take you know ten thousand dollars and give this car to another person and he will be the owner of this car so this ownership is not a real relationship between you and this car so it doesn't exist out there it is just in your mind the mind of people these are conventional concepts these are mental constructs and when we look at our daily life we see that we're exactly living with this concept not with the reality of this world i am the boss i'm the doctor i'm the engineer this is my bloodline this is my family name this is my surname this is my car this i own this i own this land i own this apartment i i'm the master he's the slave okay all those concepts that we made up to live in this world which is called al-ulum al-a'tabariya in tafsir al-mizan mental constructs the concepts that was made by our mind these shape our dunya this is the reality of our dunya so my dunya is what is not these trees and lands and rocks and mountains no the relationship that I invent, that I make up between myself and the beings, which does not exist. This kind of love and passion, which we think is eternal, for the temporary beings, for the temporary life, which does not make any sense. It's an illusion. You want to live forever on this planet, but you won't. So it's an illusion. It's your dunya. You think that this this home, this this car, this laptop, everything belongs belong to you. So this belonging, this this ownership does not exist out there. Out there, you can buy them. You can sell. Uh, you can you can you can sell them. You can buy another things. So you can change them. There is no reality out there. But you live with these things. You live with your titles. I'm Ayatollah, this. Okay? I'm doctor, that. By having these titles, I'm living in this society. I need that social recognition, social acceptance, which is not real. This is just in minds of people. People made this up to live in this world. But we got stuck in millions and millions and millions of these concepts. This is called a dunya in the eyes of Allah Taala, according to Quran. So, why is it called lab? Lab means game. Why, when you look at your children and you say that they're playing, why you call this activity playing a game? Because you see that it's 
it, it doesn't have a real purpose. They're just amusing themselves. They're just spending their times. You know, they're not going to go after something real. But a person who's working in, in Google or in Microsoft, you, you don't call him a player or a gamer. He's working. Okay? In your eye. According to Quran, because the hereafter is the reality of life of the human being, when you are stuck in the life of this world, when you think that you belong to this world and this world belongs to you, which is not correct, this, this kind of conception and then this kind of action according to those conceptions is called the la'ib in Quran. This is game. Lahab. This doesn't pursue any real goal. So, at dunya in Quran means your mind. The concepts in your mind. I love him. I love that car. They love me. I love them. Okay? I'm the boss, as I said. I own this, that, all the relationships. These are just made up by human beings without any existence out there. So if you get stuck into this kind of conceptions, you are then in the prison of Adonia. It will be your prison. All those concepts are the bars of this prison. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوَ وَلَعِبْ if you really want the life, the real life, the eternal life, the hereafter is the reality of the life. And another verse I recited in Surah Al-Hadid, verse number 20, beautiful verse in Quran. اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعبوا وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم فتكافر في الأموال والأولاد Know that the worldly life is only a game, a temporary attraction, a means of boastfulness among yourselves. You are proud of your bloodline. You are proud of your color. You are proud of your appearance. You are proud of your certification. You are proud of your PhD. You are proud that you are an Ayatollah. You are proud of your knowledge of anything. This, this pride, this pride is not real. Because you are pride of something which is not eternal, which is not real. These are the titles that we give people and take th from them easily. People made this up. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ He says what? He says that the worldly life is only an illusion. It's just in your mind. So if you really think about the reality of this life, you see that the, the ownership of everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no real connection between you and the things that you think that they belong to you. So everything changes. We need an eye that can really understand and see the reality of this world and pierces this kind of illusion, which is called a dunya. And this is one of the major missions of Quran. Brothers and sisters, one of the aims of Quran is to tell people that you're not living in the real life, in the real world. Come out of your egg. Come out of this artificial world that you made by your minds. And it needs another discussion. How we made this concept. Allah in one of his books, The Principles of Philosophy, he talked, you know, beautifully about this, this mental construct concepts. He is called he, he called this Al Mafahimul Atibariya, inshallah, for those brothers and sisters who want to study philosophy, that's so precious for them. Understanding the reality of the al uh, Okay, so here, here, the thing is, so the world that you think that you're living in is the world of concepts, the world of titles, the world of people's, you know, 
understanding from you and your understanding from people the minds of people which are not real this is why Quran always asks us to return to the reality in this world in this worldly life you can return to the reality by understanding two things Tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your nafs as we called in the previous session ma'rifatun nafs so now the question is how can we cross this kind of illusion because as i talked about everything in the daily life is somehow connected to this kind of illusion i'm 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 an employer i have employees i'm the boss he's he's my he's my man okay he's the, he was the master in the ancient world and he had some slaves the ownership exists. I, 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 I need ownership in my life. So what should I do? I, should I just erase all of those things and live in the caves? No. You just, need, you just need to change the conception. And understand that, yes, you need these concepts. But these concepts are not real. You have to live in this society, inshallah. I will talk about that. That Quran... Quran's Arfan and Quran's purification crosses from the, the bridge of society. Islam is a very social religion. Inshallah, we'll talk about that. But you have to understand and put it in your mind that this is not real. All those concepts are not real. And you have to hold on to the realities of this world the realities of this world and how is that possible Allah Tabata by alongside other um, spiritual scholars of the school of Ahlul Bayt like Mirza Jawad al-Maliki al-Tabrizi, Ayatollah al-Qazi, Mullah Hussain Quli Hamadani, Imam Khomeini and other great scholars here their recommendation again according to Quran is what Vikr al maut if you want to cross this illusion have the remembrance of the death exactly like this verse of quran let's recite this verse again audhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem wa ma hadhihi alhayatud dunya illa lahw wa la'ib verse number 64 in surah al-ankabut wa inna ad-dar al-akhirata lahiya al-hayawan here everything in your mind is just a game and amusement and the real life is in the hereafter so when you die where is the ownership where is your car where's your clothes where's your bank account where's your instagram account where's your facebook account where are your children where are your properties where is your home nothing everything disconnected from you why because they were not really connected to your reality So the death is the beginning of understanding and witnessing the reality of this world. As Amir al-Mu'mineen says beautifully, All the people are asleep. When they die, they awake. Okay, so the way is to remember the death because death eradicates every unreal concepts. Because you know, if you imagine yourself, yeah, you're going to die, it's your last moment, or you have already died and your uh, relatives are attending your you know, funeral proce procession, in that time that which is the very real time for you you see that you have no belonging you have nothing but the real things that you achieved in this life which is which are your amar our deeds our actions our behavior our qualities these are the real things for us
So this is what we have in our narrations. That Udhkuru Hadim al Remember the destroyer of the joys. I think from Amir al Mu'min or Rasulullah. So let's see. Udhkuru. It means remember the death which eradicates, destroys the joys. Which joys? The temporary illusions. Because the rea real joy is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for those people and believers who believe in Allah. This joy mean, means this worldly, temporary, unreal joy. So the way is the Kurmot. Again, connected to the uh, previous lectures. By dhikrul maut, you return to your nafs, to your reality. Because with the remembrance of the death, you will again understand that your soul, yourself, your nafs, is in a breach. It's just a station. You're going to cross this vault. This is not a place for you to live forever. So again, if you remember the death, you are remembering your nafs. The reality of your nafs, which is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which lives forever in the damnation or salvation. So, the dunya and the concept of a dunya does not mean this planet earth or the galaxies or skies. This concept refers to what? This concept describes the illusions and imaginations in our mind. All those concepts that we made in this world and we are proud of them or hate them. All those concepts that has that have no reality out there in the real life. And the means is the remembrance of the death. And the best time and best occasion for this is the holy month of Ramadan, especially the nights of Qatr, to remember the death. Just imagine in a quiet place, imagine that you're dead. You're going to die. What happens? Your relatives, your kafan, your grave, your lahat. The last moment that you have no one to help you, except you. You have no one. It is narrated from Shaykh al-Bahai, rahmatullah alayhi. Who is buried uh, near Imam al Rada alayhi salam in Mashhad, one of the greatest scholars of the school of Ahlul Bayt, that in the last months of his life he was, you know, praying <coughs> and reciting Quran and do a'mal in the famous uh, cemetery of Takht al in Isfahan. And, you know, he was a great person, a spiritual person. He says that, you know, immediately, you know, somehow at, at, at the night, I saw a very beautiful, handsome young man is approaching a grave and after that disappeared. I was, you know, wondering what is this? A, some minutes later, a very vile dog approached the same grave and then disappeared. Again, I was excited more and asked myself, what's happening? Then I saw that young man is coming out of that grave with the blood, with blood on his face. And he was like a person who was punched in a match and was very anxious and and sad and he he said that i went to him and asked him what happened here you approached the grave and you disappeared and the dog disappeared what was that the young man said that this grave belongs to a person who just died this night and is buried there this is the first night of his time in the hereafter okay i was the embodiment representative of his good deeds. I, wa I was the good, the, the, the good actions of him. That dog 
was the embodiment, the manifestation of the bad deeds of him. We both entered the grave. We wrestled and that dog could beat me and punch me and I was going to die and put me out of the great grave. And that dog will be this man's interlocutor and will be with this man until the day of judgment. The bad deeds. This is the reality of our Allah. This is the reality. Not this concept called ad dunya May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq to repent to him, to do tawbah during these blessed nights and days. Inshallah, especially the night of Qadr, inshallah, with those beautiful a'mal, beautiful supplications that we have in our narrations. Don't lose the time. Don't miss this time. This is so valuable to read Dua Abu Hamz, to read all those ad-iyyad supplications uh, which are narrated in the books like Al-Iqbal or in Mafatihul Jannah. Inshallah, inshallah, we will have this tawfiq to do, inshallah, this a'ma. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala Muhammad wa alihi al-adha. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa sallallahumma ala sayyidana wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin.